my mother never fails to tell me that I don't know how to wash bathroom towels. And I must say she has the right of it there. Hard as sandpaper. <laughs> Hello, this is Alphonse and here on YouTube you will find a lot of movement based videos that challenge you in three areas. In the area of cardio, in strength and in flexibility. So there's a lot of great videos on that already and my videos go into a different direction. They focus on a different area. In my videos you and me we will work together to improve how you move, to refine your movements, to improve your movement quality and at the same time improve how you sense movement, your ability to sense differences, small differences. It's like with learning music. The better you become at playing an instrument, the better you will be able to identify notes and chords and melodies and that's the same with my movement videos. So in my last video we were starting with very small movements of the hip joints and then we made these movements bigger and bigger. And in this video we will go a different route. We will start again with small movements of the hip joints but keep them small. I've already done this lesson together with my mother just yesterday on video. And we both found it very worthwhile. We both enjoyed ourselves during these sessions. So I expect you and me, we will also have a good session today in today's video. So let's get right into it. And we will start by lying on the back. So please come to lie on your back. <clears throat> and maybe you want to have yourself a roller or a rolled up towel under or behind your knees to make yourself comfortable when you lie down on your mat or on your bed or sofa. And <laughs> so of course first arrive <clears throat> in your position on your back. Ah. <laughs> Prepare yourself for Maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes movement session. Be on your back and place your hands somewhere on your hips, hip, hip joints. These little bony knobs in front of your pelvis, the anterior, superior, iliac crest. There you go, the whole word. and maybe the lower belly, the part beneath your navel. Just rest your hands in a very easy fashion, <laughs> in a method of easiness. I read this phrase in an old book <laughs> and let you breathe, you breathing. So that's what we need to refine quality. We need some uh, an uh, air of easiness. We need a little peaceful time, just rest, a clean slate. Uh, <laughs> just rest with your hands on your pelvis so you have a good feeling, a good control of your pelvis. So we use the hands to help feel, to help sense. And then bring your attention to your left knee. Oh, your legs. Your legs. So for, uh, for the legs, don't have your legs spread like you're sitting on a fat horse <laughs> or a rhinoceros, but instead have your legs like you were sitting on a bicycle or maybe like the witches and wizards in Harry Potter, you're riding a broomstick. Just the legs dangling down then riding a broomstick. Um, you have to know that these wizards and witches they use a pillow charm. So they're not sitting on the actual broomstick. I mean how should that work? They're sitting on an invisible pillow which makes it very comfortable. So and the legs can just hangle, hangle, dangle down. So that's what, how the legs should be just dangling down there in a very method of easiness. <laughs> Owen Wister, the Virginian. Uh, okay, and what else? Ah, yes, the left knee. So, 
start to bend your left knee a little bit. And when I say a little, it's a little. It's not a lot. <laughs> it's the opposite of a lot. It's a little. So even less than that. A little. So when I bend it, you, you can't really see it. If you would look at the screen and you look at my left knee bending, there's not much bending to be seen. And uh, maybe you shouldn't look at the screen, but look inside yourself when you bend the knee and then let go again and bend it and let go. And even though, so in which direction is the knee going? More to the side or more up to the ceiling? And when you bend your knee, maybe your left heel is dragged upwards towards your left buttocks a little bit and then extend it again. So it's a folding of the leg. And of course, not only the knee is bending, but also your left hip joint, of course. And when the knee is coming closer to the ceiling, just a little bit, then your left hip joint is coming closer to the floor. So the pelvis is tilting. Observe this. So you move in a very refined manner, very slowly and small in extent. And you feel, you sense that your pelvis is tilting. Your entire pelvis is tilting towards your left hip joint. So when your left knee is bending, the right bony upper part the right side of, a, of your anterior superior iliac crest is coming towards the ceiling while your left hip joint is depressing down to the floor. And of course, if you keep your self, your torso, your chest truly relaxed like a <laughs> soft towel, so there's no tension. You, you will feel this pull up to your right shoulder maybe. When you bend your left knee, maybe it drags your right shoulder towards your left hip joint. So when I did this uh, movement, this class, this lesson with my mother, she couldn't help but try this immediately with, your, with her right leg. So maybe try it with your right knee as well. So leave your left knee resting and bend your right knee and see. When you bend your right knee, will the same thing happen? Or will your pelvis shift to the right or to the left? Or will your pelvis tilt? Diagonally, so when you bend your right knee, the right knee a little bit more towards the outside and to the ceiling, wherever is the easiest path for bending your right knee, then when the right knee lifts, then your right hip joint goes down towards the floor and the upper left part of your pelvis might lift, so your entire pelvis tilts towards the right hip joint. And of course it might drag to it might drag your left shoulder towards the right hip joint, but maybe the left knee and the right knee are not the same. So you could try the left knee again. Oh, and maybe the left knee, the mechanics have changed. Or maybe the way you perceive it, or maybe it's cleaning it. So we're working on a pattern here. And maybe this pattern starts to clean itself up. When you bend your left knee, then your, almost your entire body is sucked towards drawn towards your left hip joint. And when you bend your right knee, your body is drawn towards your right hip joint. Ain't that true? And also, maybe you have already tried that, when you bend both knees, so ideally it's 50%, 50%, 50-50, when you bend both knees, then your pelvis tilts downwards in an anterior fashion. So your pelvis rolls, rolls over what? Over your, over your sacrum. So you're rolling over your sacrum to the left side when you bend your left knee, the middle of your sacrum when you bend both knees, and to the right side when you bend your right knee. Or you could bend your right knee first, 
and then bend the left knee. So your pelvis is tilted, is tilting towards your right hip joint. And as soon as you lift your left knee a bit, the pelvis is starting to be drawn over the center. And then if you let go of your right knee, it continues to roll towards your left hip joint. So by ways of bending the knees, by coordinating or sequencing the bending of the knees, you can have a half circle of your pelvis. So when you bend your left knee, the pelvis rolls towards your left hip joint. And then when you bend your right knee, the pelvis rolls to the center. And when you let go of your left knee, the pelvis rolls to your right hip joint. And then, of course, when you let go of your right knee, the pelvis rolls back into its home position, where you just lie on your back. And the more you bend your knee, the stronger the tilting of your pelvis. So the more you bend your knees, the more the pelvis will roll from one hip joint to the other over your sacrum. And focus on the movement. So if you have the feeling, ah, there's something you could crack out, don't go into this direction, don't crack your bones, but focus on the movement, on the quality of movement, on the refinement of movement, how nicely and delicately you move, and at the same time, how well you can perceive movement and differences. So difference between how much you bend your left knee and right knee, and in which direction your pelvis is at any moment drawn towards to. All right, and then to, to take a short rest, just rest in your neutral position. And then we have the other direction, which is when you press down your left knee. So press your left knee to the floor in a fashion that you will of course also press your left heel against the floor. And so when you press your left leg against the floor, your left hip joint will come up. So your left leg will go down towards the floor and your left hip joint will rise up towards the ceiling. So the left hip joint will rise to the ceiling and when the left hip joint comes up to the ceiling, your whole pelvis will tilt to the right and upwards towards your right shoulder. So you can play with that. Bend your left knee, so lift your left knee and then press your left knee downwards in order to roll your pelvis. So this is a very interesting class. We are not using our core muscles to roll the pelvis, but we are using our hip muscles and the leg to roll the pelvis. How interesting is that? Something completely different. So you keep your whole upper body relaxed and you use your, the power of your hips to drive your pelvis. And of course on the other side, when you press down your right knee and your right foot, maybe you have to try a little, uh, or a couple of times, very refined until you can feel how your right hip joint lifts up when you press your right leg down. And then when your right hip joint lifts, the left upper corner of your pelvis lowers. So you need to imagine the movement as well as doing the movement. You need to form an image, like what is it that is happening here? So of course you start to form a picture of, a picture of what is happening. When you press down your left leg, the pelvis tilts in one direction, and when you press down your right leg, the pelvis tilts in the other direction and when you press down both legs or both knees then the pelvis tilts backwards, posterior, posterior tilt.
So, and now we have already done quite a few movements and it can be quite complicated when we start to do circles with the pelvis by ways of the hip joint. When you lift your left knee and then lift your right knee and then press down your left knee and then press down your right knee. How would you do circles? Lift the left knee. Press down the left knee. So, I want to leave that up to you to explore the details because this will take hours of refined work but you learned how to do it right now and play with that in, in bed before falling asleep or before or when you lie awake at night you can play with these movements and start to really get a picture for the movements of the pelvis in a very relaxed fashion so everything is relaxed except your knees, your knees bend and press a little bit and that's so, so little work that you can do it half asleep. You can even do this in sitting when you're in your car or in public transport. You can do this in sitting or yes, in sitting and play with your knees <laughs> by moving your pelvis. Very refined movements. So not only will this deepen your understanding for your pelvis, your hip joints, but it will improve them and you will see when we get up now, you will see how much smoother they will feel in standing and walking. So <laughs> let's finish this, let's stop this lesson here and roll up over one side and come to stand, face the world in standing and, and see the effects, the we reap the benefits of what we just did, so let's do it. Yes, so when you stand, ju just feel this little movement of the hip joint how it's like almost freshly oiled. How nice it is, how much you improved, refined your movements and also your ability to perceive movements, small details, small differences. Play with these movements on your own, in your own time, experiment, Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next lesson, in the next video, probably the last lesson in this hip joints series.